hey guys and girls welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day how y'all doing i hope you're doing great as always please check out the description box for all the nice links also drop a like subscribe if you likes the content check out the top right eye as well for even more amazing links and this video is all about animations and some physics i'm going to try to get to the physics part where we move we have a very simple moving boolean from last video which just checks if we're moving or not and if it is moving if the player is moving we're not animating the player on at least for the idle part so where are we animating the player well we're animating the player in a function called update animations and we have an animation timer and all as well but we might want different types of animation timers depending on what's going on but we'll start off with a right movement and then we'll see what we require firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my player.h file and in the top here outside I'm going to create a player states. So player enum player animation state states okay and we're going to create a few here. First of all I'm going to have idle equals zero uh, moving left would be one moving right equals two and you don't need to do the equals two and stuff if you already have zero for the idle it will automatically assign this stuff uh, so we can move left we can do right we can do jumping we can do falling and so on and so on but we have a few states we can play around with now idle would be what we're going to use now for that state but of course we need a little state thing here we have a frame here and we also need a short short uh what would we call it we'll call it animation state state there let's call it anim state short i can't spell today good once you have this we need to initialize this in our player.cpp init init variables or you can do it in init animations well i'll just set it here to this anim state to uh what would what they would call it idle we'll set it to idle now if you're on code blocks or any other id and you're getting errors here you might have to do player animation states idle so i'll just use that for you guys just in case you get errors so i don't want you to have any problems we'll remove the moving part like we used from the last video we don't need that anymore we have our animation state which will check what's going on and of course if it's idle it's not moving or if you guys want we could keep moving it depends on you guys i don't know well let's do it without it for now it's an easy thing to implement again let's keep going from here so we have it at idle now it's of course gonna complain a lot here and the thing is if then we don't have to do all this stuff here we can just do this remove all of this good and then we can set the animation state this animation state and this will be a little easier uh, player animation states this would be moving left and we don't have any top or down so i'm going to remove the top and down from now I'll comment those out we don't need that in our game uh, since our game is a platformer the up and down movement will be done by the falling and the jumping and this will be moving right so we're in player cpp we're changing the update movements function we're just adding the animation state we're changing the animation state here depending on what's going on and of course else if nothing else we're going to set it to idle set it to idle and this might not be the best way to go about things since else jumping let's you know what we'll do we'll do this up here we'll set it to idle at top and if anything else is happening obviously you're not idle so this will be our default we'll do this that feels good to me here we have our idle animation if this let's do it up here this is our update animations let's do this outside if this animation anim state equals player animation states idle then we're going to do a certain thing and otherwise we're going to do something else 
So if it's idle and it has gone by two seconds, uh, we will do all this stuff. Now, of course, we need different animation timers for different animations. This is the issue I'm talking about when you don't have your own structures where it might be a little problem for you to do this. We could use the same timer, actually. We'll just reset it depending on what's going on. Uh, anytime you start a different animation, we'll reset it. But we'll keep, keep it going like this uh, for now. Let's remove this moving part. Here we go. And we will just update it the way it works. We'll restart it at the end, of course. And then we will set the texture work. So everything is just as usual. Let's do a little else if here. Uh, else if, copy all of this. And let's set this to moving right. Let's start off with right like that. And pretty much we can copy the entire thing. We don't have to do anything. Here we go. Else if, boom. There we go. Once you do this, you will be able to use the second set of frames that we have in our file. And current left and all this stuff we're gonna fix. It will still be 40, but the maximum is gonna be different. And the top we're gonna have to change. So we're gonna have to use the top now because the idle part is at the top. There we go. Let's go into our file go to your textures and look at your player sheet. So the first set is idle. The second set is moving to the right. We're gonna use this now. So our top is gonna be set to 50 and we're gonna be using this set. We're gonna moving to the right like this, but our top variable will be pushed down at an offset of 50 pixels. We'll keep this open if we need it later. Set the top to, whoops, set the top to zero for idle, remember, because I showed you in the image, and set the top here to 50. Whenever we're moving to the right, our top will be 50, and not plus equals 50, remember that, don't make that mistake, just do equals 50, and current frame should be to the right, so plus equals 40, just like before. This is something we have to change. Instead of 160, let's look at our image so this is 160, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 40 is obviously that, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's do that. I shouldn't require a calculator for that. Let me think. So 10, so that would be 400 minus, so I don't want it to come there. I want it to be minus 40. So 1, 4, 360. 360. All right, quick maths. Quick maths, guys. 360. And we'll restart it and we'll move. Okay, let's try this. And let's see. Okay, so while I'm holding down the D button, it's actually moving to the to the right. So you see that? But I want it to be a little faster. It's a little too slow for me. So I want it to be a little faster. That's why we need another animation timer. Or what we can do is we can change this to one and use the same. Oh, sorry, that's the... The idle one let's change the other one to one here now let's run this and you'll see we have a right animation and it will jitter like that a little bit because once we change it we want to reset our timer we want to restart our timer if nothing else is happening let's just restart our timer and not have anything happen there and you should see the jitter kind of go away kind of go away there a little faster so that's a good way to do it guys that's a good thing to do. Uh, we are very, very happy with this. Let's move on to the next thing. Let's add a little stuff here to our player. And this should be called physics. What you need is in a physics component is you need velocity, you need an acceleration, you need a way to slow down, a deceleration, and you need all these things. Luckily, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, we will have a SF vector 2F velocity. And all this will be taken care of in the player class. I would do this in a separate class as well. If I'm making it, I were, I we're making a engine, a little more detailed engine. But this is for you guys to just understand it. Then it's up to you later to take this out into parts and work with it. I will make more complicated games later. If you want to watch games where I do use the component system, you can watch my live streams or you can also watch 
the uh, SFML RPG series. I do use components there. It's a very nice way to keep things organized. Let's go here. Float or acceleration is all we need. And then a float uh, deceleration. We'll just call it deceleration. Actually, it's just going to be a percent of the velocity that you're going to slow down. Uh, it will be more like air resistance, kind of. So it's, it's pretty good. It, it gives you a pretty good way of, of moving. Now, jumping acceleration would be good to have, but we'll see how, what we'll do with that in a bit. First of all, let's just do the velocity acceleration and deceleration. We're going to have an update move. We have an update movement function, of course. But we need a void update physics component thingy. Call it, name it like that. Whoops, define it as well. Boom, and you're good to go. Now, this is a little teaser for you guys. I'm going to have to end the video very soon, but it's going to be a little teaser. What you're going to do in here, what we're going to do together, is we're going to update the velocity at all times, all the time. And we're also going to decelerate the player at all times. And we're going to add to our velocity here in the movement, depending on what we're going to do. We're going to make our own move function, which will automatically take care of all the physics for us and the acceleration and all that stuff. So we don't have to see it in here. And also we'll create a jump function and all these things in our player. So we're gonna make we're gonna make this kind of nice and very, very, uh, fr not fragmented, what do you call it? It's gonna be in pieces anyway. It's not a component system per se directly, but it is, it is still gonna be pretty nice. And you'll still be able to use this in your own games and make a component system out of it. So now we have a moving right animation at least guys you can play around with this you can have some fun try to make the moving left one because you have to flip the sprite we're going to do that later as well we're going to flip the sprite set the origin to the center that's what you're going to have to do and we're going to have to make another piece called the hitbox which is going to help us take care of all the collision and movement we're, we're not going to rely on the sprite for all that stuff the sprite can be huge but you want the hitbox to be perfect or a lot better than what the sprite can represent. So we'll do two different classes here and we'll see what we get. But thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully you learned something. Check out the description box, all the links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.